Welcome everyone. Here's a Aikido uh, accessory pack. This is a four pack. And we'll soon be opening this up and see what the mystery piece is. Now, it's been a little difficult getting um, these actual additional figures. And the price of the actual arcade, which you'll see right behind there, uh, was $20 more than retail. Uh, so I'm not sure what's going on with Moose Toys, the billion-dollar toy company from Australia, and why there isn't enough product as usual. Now, we've seen this from the toy industry consistently, and uh, it doesn't really make any sense to me. You make money by selling product, yet they're constantly out of different figures. So let me know in the comments down below, are you having the same problem in your country? Um, I am in Europe, so I don't really know how it's going there, but um, let me know and let me know what's going on with you personally. So let's take a look at these. You've got one gold figure here, quite uh, cool looking with the uh, glow, and I think those are glow in the dark, um, Mason Shield. You've got this Viking type figure here. One weapon. This is two weapons, and that's very important. Um, the number of weapons determines how easily your piece can get knocked out. And here we go with the other ones. So uh, let's turn this over. I don't know if they have... I don't think they have the actual names on here, but here's the figures you can get right now, supposedly, if you can find them. Uh, there's several on here I'd like to get. Uh, but, you know, good luck finding them as usual. So let's go into that again and look at those figures that are out there. This is usually on a catalog that is included as well. Uh, it did come one with the actual um, Keto Battleground there. And, of course, it shows you how it works. Um, where the figures is like this. You battle each other until you actually knock the other piece actually you tip the head and we're going to go over of how these actually work i mean this is pretty much an exact copy of karate fighters from milton bradley in the was it the 90s um except what they've done here is they've made them much smaller so let me get something here to open this up with and um we can then go from there So let's take a look at these and open them up, find out what the mystery piece. I believe this was about 20 U.S. dollars. Again, these seem to be a little bit high for such of um, these types of figures. So let's see as we open up. And I said this is what the package looks like. It's a um, basically attractive package. Let's see here if we can open this up on the side here and we can kind of pop this open and um, you'll see the actual uh, figure down below there I'm not going to keep this box I'm just going to go in and cut it open and of course you've got the so probably identical each of these that you get with the figures um, yeah, it shows you basically how to play the game, how it's used, how the figures pop open, and here's all the different figures you can get. As he said, good luck finding any of these things. You can't really, um, uh, the pathetic uh, stocks you get from these people. So let's look at the actual figure here. This is the secret figure, the bonus. Do they, what are they term do they use here? Yeah, it's really the secret figure. I don't know how much a bonus it would be. After all, you're paying for it. Um, and we'll look through these as well. Pop these out of the package. Um, go over some of the um, actual techniques. Because, you know, there is a technique to all this. And here's the bonus figure. Um, 
that you get with this one that you can't see. Oops, this split open. So this is kind of like a robot type figure. Um, get in here close so you can see it good, yeah. see if I can find that exact figure name there for you. Um, I must have a figure um, name on it. I don't know if this is some sort of exclusive. Um, it's got a big fist uh, by itself. And one of the problems with these figures is that um, as easy as they appear that they open, they really don't often. So I don't know if some figures open easier than others. We'll take a look at that as well. Um, I can find that one particular figure on here. I don't know if these are bonus figures. Like this guy is Dark Sting. Right here, this is Dark Sting. Let me move this down a little better so we can, there we go, see these better. That's Dark Sting. Let me see if I can find the other ones here. Which one is that? And of course, uh, you have that um, Viking looking uh, figure. There he is, Axel. This is Axel. Let's see if we can find that other one. Yeah, this is Night Bl uh, Nightblade right here. And let me see if I can find that other one with the big fist on here. Yeah, that's shut down. So, shut down, which is a um, nice figure. They seem to be very well made. I mean, they're painted real nice. Let's get some views in here again. They're painted real nice. They're assembled pretty well. The materials seem to be pretty good. Now, of course, all of these pop open by having them struck at the head here. And then these pop open. And there seems to be a little magnet underneath there as well, maybe. I'm not sure if that's a magnet, but basically they're held together uh, by that actual. So they're well painted, they're well made, they look good. And of course you, you do that and that's with a strike and that opens it up. And then you just stick it back together. Um, look at this house. And again, let's, you know, you strike it at the head, the head goes back. And that's how it splits open. So they seem to be very well made. They're painted well. There's two screws on the back. And we'll show how this pops open as well. And generally what you see inside here is that little metal... Uh, I'm not sure if that's a magnet or not because it's kind of holding the arm on here. So it may not be a magnet. It may be just a metal pin. Then when you want to put them back together, you just press them together and push the head forward. You're done. Now, um, the reason why I picked these up in particular was the fact that, you know, the two figures on here, you don't... Uh, a lot of figures you can get just with these items here. But these, this comes with the actual arena um, uh, that you have here. 
Um, so you don't need to get extra ones, and I'm not sure why you would. And of course, they work in several, <coughs> excuse me, several different ways. And um, it's very difficult with these two figures uh, to have a proper battle. And yeah, one of the important things to do is kind of adjust your weapons, get them in the right position. You know, if someone has two weapons like this, it's very difficult uh, to hit this particular figure hard enough to pop its head back. So it's, it's nearly impossible from what I've seen that when you're using this to strike uh, that you can get in there and uh, actually knock that head. Because when you have two weapons, um, you've got this normal block where you have to go in there. Now, this guy can get in there because there's no actual... Um, uh, well, looky there. I was able to knock that off this time. Um, but you're going to have to um, look for that. And you're going to have to work on it. That's a particular type. And, of course, I wasn't able to see it because I'm behind the camera here. Um, but um, it's pretty difficult to get this. I've tried it many times. It's very difficult to get that robot-type figure. Um, and when you're battling someone else, if you're doing this with somebody else and you've got different figures, you want to make sure you find out what one they're using, or that should be part of the game. I'm going to use this piece. Uh, what, do you, what are you going to use? And that should be part of, uh, then you decide uh, what figure goes against what figure. So, um, this is called Screenshot. And Turbo Chuck Lee is the other guy there. So, this is Tur uh, Turbo Chuck Lee. And this is Screenshot. I guess that's a supposed to be a computer head there. As I said, they're very well made. They're cool. Uh, it's a fun little game. I think the older ones, which use six inch figures, six eight inch figures, uh, was better. You get a more fighting feel to it. These are so small that it becomes difficult. So you have to get in there and figure out how to do it and how these uh, pieces are going to work um, to uh, be able to take out the opponent. So as I said, when you get two weapons like this, it's very difficult. And there are all sorts of little tricks. Um, and that is one of them is a, a backward spin like this. You get in there and you get a backward spin to try and uh, get the head there. Because you have to hit the head, and you have to hit it pretty good to knock it off. So uh, knock it back enough so that it makes the figure go. Because that's how it works. See we, we saw right there. And hopefully you saw that action. As I said, it's difficult with me with a camera of how that actually happens. So, um, I think someone should be able to pick figures. But the problem with that, if you pick this really undefeatable figure, um, then someone else is going to pick something that works well, too. And I think that's probably fair. On the other hand, it should be whatever figure you're fighting with should be able to figure out how that goes. So, but um, anytime you have two weapons, you can see again how this guy is constantly getting trashed because he doesn't really have any proper defenses. This figure, screenshot here, has that shield here. And by having that shield, and of course you've got to figure out what position to put these in and everything else. Uh, there's lots of little intricacies to this to make your fighting battle uh, better. But as I said, this is one of the most undefeatable figures out there. So anything that has... A big head like that and has two weapons. Now, if it doesn't have two weapons, you'll notice that this doesn't have two weapons. This in itself makes it a much weaker figure, even though it's got this huge arm, which you may be able to learn how to use effectively. Obviously, I've never used this before. I just opened it up. Another single weapon figure, which means he doesn't have a shield to protect him. Notice the shields here. That's why these are superior uh, figures, um, the special figures, because they work better because they have two actual weapons, which means they can defend themselves. While well, this guy really can't defend himself that well. All he can do is strike, but the other one's going to move in. And you'll see with this one, here's another one that's going to be difficult to actually beat. Why? Look at that. It's got a shield again. 
and of course the ball here. So, um, so it's going to be very difficult to beat this op uh, opponent because he's got the two weapons. Now, let's look over here with um, the Viking-looking figure. And he's only got one weapon again. So that's going to make him much weaker. Now, I don't know if the rules allow you to take weapons from other people and put it in there. They do have the open hands. If you notice, uh, this has an open hand well. So as well, so you could put a shield in there, or other things. So I'm not sure what the rules say about that. But if you took a shield, let's say from this one, that oh, where is it? from this uh, warrior that you had and put it on this guy. And let's see if we can do that here. Um, you're going to have a very strong figure. So, uh, because as I've mentioned, any time that you have that, uh, you are able to uh, build your, your uh, um, figure to be much stronger. Now, I'm not sure if these come out or not. It doesn't look like it comes out well, and I don't want to break it while I'm talking on camera here. I'll mess with that later. So it's very difficult to get this shield off of this hand here. So you may not be able to do that and swap, and I'm not sure that that's part of the uh, allowed in the rules uh, because that would be changing the figure. But you can see these are really cool. This is a nice little set. As I said, this was the bonus figure in that particular set that I got. I'm not sure if the... Um, let me look on the box here. Sometimes they have codes on these boxes and stuff. Um, I don't know. Uh, here's one code, 14225. I don't know if that means you're going to get this person with it or not. Um... The barcode, I'm not sure if that means anything. Of course, that has a number on it, but um, the barcode number itself, not the two numbers on the sides of it, are 30996142521. Now, that means um, that's the barcode. I think the code of this package is 14225. So... Um, that means possibly if you're trying to look for this guy, you may be able to use that code to find it because they're all coded. There's some number they're using and they need to do that in the factory. So here you go with one accessory kit. Again, this is a cool little kit. Um, I'm probably going to get one of the Karate Street Fighter old uh, sets. I had them years ago and show you what the bigger ones look like. And of course, they were almost identical to this, except the figures were about six inches. So, um, and they had handles that you could move them like this, and they had a pressure point in the set, in the chest. You had to hit the chest uh, just right, and then they, they would uh, pop off or pop open, or I'm not sure how those worked or not. But if you really love that kind of thing, and that's the kind of stuff I like, interaction, um, catapult-type games, um, things that, not only is there a game, but something happens. You're using something physically. Um, certainly check those out, Karate Fighters. You can get them online. They have kind of went up in price. They used to be very cheap. Now they're 60 anywhere from $40 to uh, $70. Uh, and you can interchange... Interestingly enough, which is very typical of Moose, um, you can interchange the fighting figures. I mean, they did this, uh, they copied Battleground, and there's a lot of things that Moose Toys does that are very similar to other people. Um, I'm not sure there's anything wrong with that, but uh, um, what's wrong with them is their typical part of the toy availability and how prices have went up. The retail on this... Uh, on the actual battle thing. It was supposed to be $29.95. Well, you see it pretty commonly now for $40 to $50. Well, what is it? Why are we paying a premium for a brand new toy out there? I think that sucks. Um, I actually emailed Moose and never heard back from them. It's been two weeks now asking them, why isn't there greater <coughs> availability, excuse me, excuse me, <coughs> of your toys?
Why is that? And of course, they never got back to me. And you know, this is like so many toy companies. I had no idea. You know, they say that nobody buys toys anymore. At least children don't. Well, there must be a lot of people buying toys for children because this a moose is a billion dollar a year sales business. So is Playmobil. And um, I'm sure Mattel uh, is probably, uh, what did I hear, five, seven billion dollars a year. Uh, and certainly Hasbro is in the same ballpark. So you're talking about these companies make billions of dollars. This is not some goofy little low profit business. So, um, so it certainly would be uh, nice to have them respect their customers more, and uh, particularly if they expect to cater to the adult toy market, as apparently toys are mostly bought by adults now. But I've heard different figures. It's 20% of adults buy the toys, 80% are the children. Now they're saying that children aren't buying toys. And for some bizarre reason, they don't want to put any inventory or spend any money to get toys to people. They can't keep them on the shelves. They don't have good direct marketing. I mean, what is this if there is something called shelves? But certainly Amazon is out of it all the time. So what is that all about, Moose? Get on the stick and, you know, get some customer service. I'm a little bit tired of um, everybody not having customer savers. You can't get anybody on the phone, on SE. Amazon, I guess you can call. They usually give you a runaround. Um, you can't get people on Facebook. I mean, these are billion, billion dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars, and they don't put any money into staffing uh, service people that you can talk to or at least answer your emails quickly. And of course, I guess we can say that Moose Toys, the uh, uh, Kangaroo Land toy maker, the Golden Nectar people loving, um, don't seem to do any better than anyone else might. Until next time.